by managing and monitor monitoring student growth through writing. Um, before I talk about the writing, I'm going to talk about um, the classroom that the writing happens in. Um, I was teaching seventh grade students, and I taught both um, social studies and language arts. And in my classroom, these two subject matters were integrated to create more of a community style classroom. Um, in my classroom, basically, social studies did not exist without language arts, and language arts did not exist without social studies. Um, and because I had the opportunity to teach language arts, um, the students had lots of experience with writing assignments, but these three specific writing assignments that I'm going to talk about did happen in social studies. Um, I also taught in a full inclusion um, classroom, which meant that I had a variety of academic abilities in my classroom, ranging from gifted to students with special education needs, and I had six students that had IEPs. Um, it's also important to note that I had a varying amount of effort put forth by um, different students. I had about five or six students that were very apathetic in their learning and tended not to complete any homework, and sometimes making them do classwork was also a struggle. Okay, so the three writing assignments that I did, I entitled them Think and Write, because what I did was I had a quote that dealt with historical content, and then I had the students analyze those quotes um, to create an interpretive response. Um, I did conduct these assignments in class because, as I stated before, um, I had students that had motivational issues. So I conducted the assignments in class in an effort to try to um, have the most students complete these assignments, but that also influenced <coughs> the structure of the assignment as well as the length. Um, my goal for all three of these writing assignments was um, that the students would be able to use their historical knowledge um, to analyze and interpret quotes to strengthen their reasoning through writing skills. Okay, so um, my first assignment dealt with SOL US 2.5C, which is the SOL that deals with um, World War One. It also dealt with NCSS Theme 2 and 6. Um, the prompt that I gave the students was, think about the discussions we have had on war and any prior knowledge you have of World War One. World War One began in 1914 and ended in 1918. It was often referred to as the war to end all wars. Think about this quote and write a response. Um, this prompt was given to the students before we started discussing um, World War One, so the students had no um, content knowledge given from me. Everything that they used to um, answer this question was from their prior knowledge. Um, the goal of this assignment was that the students would be able to recognize the magnitude of World War I and its lasting impact um, it had on people. Because this was the first writing assignment I gave, I gave it with um, little instruction. I basically gave the students the assignment sheet and told them to read the directions and answer it. Um, so taking a look at my first student's response, um, this student is labeled gifted, but she puts very little effort into a lot of her work and um, very rarely works to her full potential. Um, in this writing assignment, um, it was a good response, but it lacked a lot of details and any historical details in general. Um, she was pretty vague when she described the war. She said that it was um, a huge war, and then she said big, but she did not use any examples or details to describe it. Um, she also didn't use any of her prior knowledge of World War I, but that could be because um, she didn't have any. Um, student two that we're going to look at um, is also a female, and she is a very hardworking student. Um, but she tends to be more hardworking when it comes to creative assignments that happen in class, um, assignments that deal with drawing and art. Um, her response was very descriptive of what she thought the war would look like, saying, um, it makes me picture a bloody battle that's fuzzy around the edges and sunlight coming in from the east. And so, although she was very descriptive in the war, she didn't use any historical details or anything like that to support her answer. And again, she also did not use prior knowledge of World War I. Um, the second assignment also dealt with the SOL US 2.5C, which is again the SOL dealing with World War I. Um, it connected to NCSS theme 5 and 6. Um, the prompt that I gave the students was think about the different types and uses of propaganda we have analyzed pertaining to World War I. In complete sentences, explain what you think Walter Lippmann meant by this quote. We must remember that in the time of war, what is said on the enemy side of the front is always propaganda, and what is said on our side of the front is truth and righteousness the cause of humanity and a crusade for peace.
This prompt was given to the students after two days of um, instruction time on propaganda. They not only had notes on propaganda, but they also went through a propaganda gallery walk in which the students had the opportunity to look at different pieces of propaganda from World War I and analyze those pieces to say what um, propaganda tool was used and what propaganda objective was used. Um, to the goal for this assignment was that students would be able to recognize propaganda is used on both sides of the war. Um, this assignment was scaffolded more than the first assignment. Um, first off, it was given out after the students had instruction on propaganda. And then um, the students also had, were given the feedback from their first response um, and asked to look at that and use that to help them write this next response. Um, our first student um, gave a nice response in the fact that she saw the irony in the quote, which was actually something that most students did not see. Um, and so she did a good job analyzing the quote in that sense, but again, she did not use any examples from class or um, any historical details to support her analysis. Um, student two, um, on the other hand, did not see the irony that was in the quote, but used good historical details to um, support her answer. She noted the fact that the central powers was the enemy side that Walter Lippmann was talking about. Um, she also mentioned nationalism. And then finally, she said that this quote uses patriotic appeal, which was a propaganda tool that we had talked about. Um, assignment three um, ties into SOLUS 2.7b and NCSS themes one and six. Um, the prompt was, think about our study of the Holocaust. Recall our discussions of the Holocaust, the film One Survivor Remembers, and the web press featuring the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum exhibits. In complete sentences, explains what you think Eli Wiesel, a Holocaust survivor, meant by this quote. Take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. Please use facts from the Holocaust to support your answer. This prompt was given to the students after a week of instruction on um, the Holocaust. Um, I wanted, through this assignment, I wanted the students to be able to recognize the lasting impact of the Holocaust. This assignment had the most scaffolding out of all three. Um, first of all, like I said, it was given after a week of instruction on the Holocaust. Um, the students also now had both of their first two responses and feedback to look at um, to help them write this last response. Um, I also included in the instructions that the students were required to use facts from the Holocaust to support their answer because um, although we had talked about that in class, um, by analyzing the first two responses, I had noticed that the students were not including um, appropriate details um, from class. And then also, before the students completed this assignment, we did a thank aloud um, in the class. And so I read the quote out to the students, and then as a class, we discussed what the students were thinking, um, which helped them brainstorm. And then I gave the students the assignment sheet, and they completed the writing. Um, this was by far the best writing assignment from each of the students that I received. Um, our first student actually included some historical details, which was the first time she did it. Um, she mentioned, um, the Allied powers and their influence in stopping the Holocaust. She kind of took an interesting perspective on this, focusing more on how the Allied powers did end the Holocaust instead of focusing on how no one really um, stepped up in the beginning of the Holocaust to say that. But it was good that she did mention this historical detail, but I still think her writing could have been strengthened with a few more. Um, student two's response was not only her best writing piece, but one of the best writing pieces that I saw from the group. Um, she had great writing with a great introduction saying, silence was created by fear, and then going on to ask a question. Um, and then she also mentioned Hitler's youth as a historical detail to support her answer, which was um, a concept that we had talked about in great deal, um, and about how that the Hitler's youth was telling on their parents and other adults and how she cited this as a reason that maybe people did not want um, to stand up. So, um, Overall, reflections from this assignment and the three pieces of writing. Um, things that I think would still strengthen um, these three girls' writing was um, written feedback. I think all three of them, as well as other students in the class, um, took the written feedback that I gave them and um, tried to change the writing to help that, which was very evident through um, my second student's response and the fact that I mentioned that she needed to start including historical details, in fact, and she did that um, starting with response two, and then um, student one did that starting with response three. 
Um, I also realized for them and mainly for all of my seventh graders that clear directions are very important, um, especially in middle school. Um, not just clear directions that are written on the paper, but also clear directions that I discuss with the students. Um, that way they know what is expected of them and what they're doing because I discovered if I, like in the first one when I just gave the students the, um, the prompt, a lot of them didn't even take the time to read the questions that could help them and things like that. Um, and then finally, if I had to do this assignment again, I think one thing that I would do would be to stress the importance of the historical details um, by doing a model response. That is something that I didn't do. I didn't show the students an example of what I expected of them. And I think if I would have done that, then um, the students would have had a better idea of what to do and then hopefully included more historical details. And I think not even, I don't even think I would have had to show them um, a response that I did, but I think if I would have chosen one of the better responses that the students had done and shown them that this is an example of what good work looks like and this is an example of what you guys should be doing, then I think that would have also increased their growth in writing. Thank you. Did you, um, did you use rubrics at all? Um, I, the first, only the first um, writing was graded and the other two were just in-class writing assignments that were used to help strengthen their writing skills. And I didn't use, I, I had the rubric down that I knew what a two through a five was written down, but I did not give the students there a rubric to go along with it. Okay. And then, you know, you, how did you decide to use quotes, the, the prompts? Where, you know, what did you think about um, that and the, and the choice of those? Was that difficult to choose? Or? Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of quotes, and I just think that um, a lot of interpretation can come from the quotes, and I like using them in my own writing styles, and so I came across um, I was trying to come up with a, a hook for World War One, and I came across the quote, um, the war to end all wars, and I thought it would be interesting to have the students like picture what a war like that would look like before we started World War One, and they could see that. And so once I came up, that, up with that assignment, I um, came up with quotes for the other two. Thank you.